What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and today's show, we're going to go over uh, private uh, trips to space and what are they really doing. We're going to cover everything that just transpired in the last 24 hours. We have an update on the fake Secret Service agents, and of course, we're going to talk about the sun and everything else that is important right this moment. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. I always wonder why, why does the news lie? I always wonder why, why. What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. We have a ton to cover in a short amount of time, so I want to remind you, if you are new here, you can sign up for notifications over on marfugalnews.com, and you can follow everything we are doing here. Every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we show you is going to have a bibliography over on our website. Now, when you go over to our website, you will notice it is very easy to navigate. You will just look for today's thumbnail, selling tickets uh, to get off of earth and then of course the end is real once you click on that you will see that you will have every single link at your fingertips that way you can go back and check my work <clears throat> in fact there's a there was a mistake that I probably need to fix uh, earlier today so again uh, that is it you guys got to keep me correct and then of course uh, you can go back later you can retrospectively go back and of course take your time through the news once you hit a yellow bar that says web only content that is the stuff that is too hot for TV or a essentially too far to one direction for us to cover it is the stuff that is getting people booted and in three months will be uh, confirmed as truth all right and then over on the right side if you do want to support if you uh, are looking to prep then I'd highly recommend looking at that right side that way you get something out of it and you are supporting your favorite channel and you are getting a discount for the thing you already needed uh, again there's tons of stuff over there great stuff like NordVPN EMP shield and then my Patriot supply uh, life-saving and life-preserving things over there to go get. Let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I am doing just fine. So, oh, by the way, just to update, uh, is everything good weather-wise over there? I know that you had uh, your power out yesterday. Uh, everything was back to normal or... Yeah, we're back to normal. It's, well, you know, we've got nasty pollen, like everything is green uh, but or yellow. But yeah, my, we're, we're good. My assumption is that you're going to have wind in a couple of days. Right now, uh, here in Washington, we're having insane winds. And what's funny is when we do have the real kind of storms, they, they sometimes they hype it up. Uh, but this one, they didn't talk about at all. And then all of a sudden, we have these huge gusts of wind. Uh, pretty wild. And then we have a powerful space laser beaming at Earth from 5 billion light years away detected. Now, this is a mega maser. At first, when you see that, you're like, okay, proof of, uh, proof of alien life. It's like they always are putting out something like almost every day. In fact, this week, there has been something since Monday every single day about UFOs. This isn't, though, because they say... It is a, a natural phenomenon. Now, there is plenty of room for people to say maybe they're just making this whole phenomenon up. 
Uh, again, a lot of the things in space obviously are theories and not confirmed. Uh, I don't know how confirmed the mega masers are and how, because uh, this one's different than the rest. It says the beam of radio waves is what co uh, scientists call a mega maser. And this one is the most distant yet, emerging from 5 billion light years away from Earth. It was detected uh, by an international team of scientists using South Africa's Meerkat, a radio telescope consisting of 64 antennas. Mega masers are naturally occurring radio wavelength lasers that can help shed light on galaxy collisions. Mega masers act like bright lights that say here is a collision of galaxies that is making new stars and feeding a mass of black holes. That was, of course, a quote from uh, co-author Jeremy Darling of University of Colorado. When galaxies merge, the gas that contained uh, becomes extremely dense, producing a specific radio signal known as a maser. Mega masers are powerful masers produced in a huge galaxy collision like beams of cosmic lighthouses. Uh, from Cosmic Lighthouses. It says the unearthing of the most distant mega maser to date was described by Darling, uh, Darling and colleagues uh, in a research paper uh, as basically uh, that this thing is one of the biggest they've seen and it is a record-breaking uh, one. It says to reflect its status as a record-breaking, uh, the team named the space laser Nakalakatha, uh, which is the Izzy Zulu meaning of Big Boss. Now, Dex, when you heard that this was called Big Boss, uh, didn't that kind of make you think other things as far as like, you know, th this is this is literally a beam of light coming from five billion light years away and they nicknamed it Big Boss? Yeah, it, 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 it makes you wonder. Um, obviously, you know, it's the biggest they've seen, right? But it also makes me wonder, like, why is this laser like hitting us directly? You know, and, and is it is there anything we need to to know or think about like that? could come from this well so and and if we see it and it, if it is direct on how big is it is it uh, is it the diameter of a planet and that's why we can see it is it encompassing like all of us if it, is it going past us it says we expect it to be the only the first of many uh, hydroxyl mega masers that will be discovered as the project continues. Rather than emitting uh, visible light, a maser emits microwave and radio wavelengths that are amplified by cosmic forces. Once the team established that they had a mega maser on their hands, they began to hunt for the galaxy it came from. They found the Nikolakatha galaxy is about 7 billion light years away and has a long tail on one side, visible in radio waves. It says the light from the Mega Maser was emitted about 5 billion years ago when the universe was only two-thirds of its current age. The main goal of Meerkat Project is to make observations of gas in distant galaxies to help understand how galaxies have evolved over the last 9 billion years. Uh, now... If you've ever looked through a high-powered telescope, I only had one chance to look through a real telescope, and that was in school. Uh, it was pretty amazing. I saw apps. I mean, it's it's a whole different world if you're actually dealing with a uh, a real telescope, and that was on a, a field trip, and this thing was massive. Um, I, I would say that, you know, it's... I have seen some things in the sky just with my telescope that I can't explain, uh, as far as this goes, though, it, it makes you wonder with everything that's going on now, you know, does the upper echelon know something that we don't? And is this laser have anything to do with it? I don't know. Of course, if you are a astrologist and you know all about it, then let us know in the comments down below and and fix my thinking. And then we have Amazon helping to build private space station for holidays above Earth. It says that Amazon will help build a private hotel in space under new plans by billionaire owner Jeff Bezos. The company's computing division, Amazon Web Services, will provide logistical, communicative, and information system support to developing the space hub called Orbital Reef. No joke, Orbital Reef. And it says Orbital Reef's uh, latest, uh, by the way, it says that it's slated to welcome space vacationers by 2030. The idea is being carried out by titans of mechanical engineering and government contracting, including Blue Origin and Boeing. Orbital Reef's latest partnership with AWS brings a trillion-dollar company into the fold. 
So why is everybody investing in this, by the way? Um, this is, it just so happens by 2030. Um, I wonder if that's like the all, all together deadline. <clears throat> I will never forget the fact that the numbers on Apophis originally showed it basically hitting and they said, oh wait, we did a miscalculation. It's not going to hit. Uh, that it showed that it was potentially going to hit in 2029. There have been many others that have come out and they said, basically, this is going to hit and they said, oh, well, it was a miscalculation and, and it's actually wrong and it's not going to hit us and we're totally safe. I see everything that is going on as far as now they are making a space government uh, as Guardia, which all of these elites are part of. On, on paper, you see that uh, that they allow anybody and everybody to go to the website or to fill out and to get your little certificate saying you're a citizen of Asgardia. That is more of like a um, kind of almost like a like a name the star type of thing and you pay $15 and you're a part of it. That isn't the real Asgardia though. The real Asgardia has done paperwork with uh, United Nations and all these other different organizations, and they are actually doing the right things to make a, a sole government in space. And the people that are involved are multi, multi billionaires, and all of them, they're not part of the whole public thing. Most of them, you won't even hear their name because they are that rich, and they are becoming part of this Asgardia thing. Uh, it, it really kind of freaks me out when I see all of the stuff that, that is happening now, like the sending of the uh, DNA samples to the deepest mountains and then, of course, to the moon. Uh, and then they're talking about opening up these space hotels. Now, if you don't believe in space and you believe in other things, that's totally cool. Um, the one thing that I'm excited for is that that debate uh, will potentially be over. I think that most of us would love if uh, space was something that we could all experience ourselves. The thing is, is almost no one here, and I guarantee you, there might be one person that might know an astronaut. Uh, none of, of none of us have been to space. It's one of the few things that you can say that almost guaranteed you know nobody that's ever known anybody else that's ever been to space. You might have like a connection like my second cousin's mother's roommate uh, worked at NASA and went up one trip or something, but otherwise not too many people have actually been to space. So it, it's kind of like a null point. It's like, unless we can physically go, uh, if there's a ticket in five years from now that is so cheap that you can go fly up there and see for yourself, I'm sure that that would uh, squash a lot of the very relevant arguments about what is going on up there. Either way, it looks like something is going on because even the very rich are being told that our planet is dying, that resources are running out. Uh, by 2030 and 2040, we're talking about the same deadline as this. They're saying that we're going to be starting to run out of natural uh, gas and, and uh, oil in just a few short years. Meanwhile, they are trying to kill the petrodollar and they are trying to switch to digital everything. Uh, so very... Very crazy stuff here. Dex, do you have anything to say about uh, as far as Amazon doing this? Uh, this kind of goes into the whole private tickets off of space. Well, yeah. Well, you know, they, they describe this thing as being 100 uh, cargo vans in size. And that, that seems, you know, on one hand, it may seem big, uh, probably in for people that have actually been to space, they probably say, oh, that's pretty roomy. You know, but to me, I'm thinking that's kind of tight, tight quarters for a vacation. Um, but uh, I guess it depends on how many people they're packing in. Yeah, if it's like a um, a hundred cargo vans, that would be like a like a Boeing, I, or I guess a, that would be bigger than a Boeing seven thirty seven or something. But <clears throat> and and does space camp count? Because I went there as a kid. No, no. All right, just checking. No. I think there might have been an astronaut there. I don't remember though. Oh, oh, I get what you're saying. No, no. 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 Pass me into Windex. Ominous cloud seen over Alaska sparks conspiracies. What's the official explanation? Well, it turns out there's not really one. It said that a large worm-like cloud materialized this week over La Alaska's Lazy Mountain, igniting conspiracy theories and prompting an investigation and explanation from Alaska state troopers. 
It happened around 7 a.m. Thursday, April 7th, and photos show the streak of smoke resembled everything from a falling meteor to a burning aircraft. So I don't see a meteor there because how the smoke actually uh, spun around it, it looks like something was spinning and had something coming out of it. This is what is making me wonder is what is really happening. Like I showed you the... Uh, the photo of the other day that has been going around. I don't know if that's older as far as the, you know, 20 planes all taking off at the same time. Uh, but when you think of a movie like Greenland, where everyone is flying to Greenland and, and in that movie, when they look up, that is the creepiest. One of the, you know, movies like that and parts like that are what make it good because if, if uh, it's the feeling of watching those planes leave, you know uh, there's people leaving. There's people getting out of there, and you're not on that plane. Those people are hiding. Something bad is coming. It was something that made you know. In these movies, it's uh, it's the idea of the realism of this actually happening that a lot of us think about all the time. Uh, but everyone poo poos. Everyone says it's never going to happen. Uh, we are very small in our thinking. We are just these tiny little dots on on you know here wherever it is and if any of what they say is true about where we are and if we're floating through space then we're you know very very minuscule and and something can just knock us off like nothing um, as far as if you believe in God God is all powerful we could be crushed like ants um, as far as natural disasters, we've seen that there has been natural disaster after natural disaster. Could this have been an asteroid or could this have been uh, one of these secret space capsules? And are they already flying up there? Are they already leaving? Are they already setting up base camps on the moon? Uh, we don't know. I, I do know that they're ahead in technology and, and the governments of the world uh, really have all of us pretty much distracted down here on the earth, whether it be from, you know, the Chris Rock and Will Smith slap that people are still consumed by uh, to the laptop, which now is like something that they totally want to talk about and get everybody's attention on. Uh, meanwhile, all of this stuff with the uh, Vlad and everything else, it's like they're they're taking out four birds with one stone. Uh, it looks to me like we're being distracted away from some serious stuff. Uh, there have been so many reports. Why are the media reports going up? Uh, the, as far as sightings of asteroids coming into our atmosphere, they are quadrupling. Over the last four years, they have gone skyrocketed up. And, it's, and you can't say it's because more people have cell phones and see it. It's not. Because we've had cell phones for you know 20 years now and really good cell phones for at least 10. So it's not because people have, you know... It, these are people seeing it. It's not because more people are looking up. Uh, I'm telling you, it, it's it's something else. Uh, the the numbers that it has shot up, it seems to me like something is happening. Uh, we'll talk about later. We're we're actually going to come back to the to the space ordeal here because we're going to talk uh, about a private company that just loaded up as well. And then we have uh, the big oogs, the other oogle. Uh, Gmail favors left-wing candidates, sends far more emails from conservatives to spam. So, by the way, we do not claim to be either, but I believe that the algorithms have uh, claimed us as one of those. Uh, Dex, we have experienced this, have we not? We've sent things from our email and it's gone into the wrong box. Oh, certainly. Uh, I think a lot of people experience this, um, you know, and, and what's interesting is somebody did a scientific study, right? They put together, you know, um, and it wasn't just Google, it was a whole bunch of people. They were looking at all of these different mail providers and they were putting everything together and they were testing it and they wanted to see what would happen. And they, you know, had some interesting others, but there was this big obvious stat uh, that sort of stood out on the Dex, you're cutting out. Uh-oh. Oh, my gosh. It is, is the Oogle doing this to you? They won't even let us talk about it. Uh, let's see here. It does look... Hold on here. Wow. 
Can you hear me? Dex, let's uh, move on. We're going to ask you to go okay. to the website for this. Uh, I've never seen that before. It says my my internet connection is unstable. Okay. Uh, go to the website. Obviously, this uh, this is going to be on our website. Uh, you get the point. You know what's going on. Didn't really need to tell many of you. Uh, in fact, uh, I would send you an email and tell you all about this, but it, you would have to check your spam. And while we're on the uh, on the subject of sending you emails, recently we did send out an email about the recent EMP uh, as far as the contest and everything that went out and all that kind of stuff and all that jazz. Um, this is a very important thing. So I hope that many of you are actually looking into this. There's a lot of Fugle family members that have probably heard this ad for three years and they're like, oh, who, you know, I don't need that or, or why do I need it? <clears throat> I'd say right now more than ever, I think people need to really, really do their own research on uh, what could happen just from a CME. Not even on the EMP side. EMP, uh, EMP Shield really tells you that, oh, it's for EMP. Uh, this should also have uh, CME. It's a CME shield as well. Uh, the sun has been so active uh, that I have gotten almost daily texts from wages uh, letting me know all of this stuff. And we're going to have him back on uh, probably in the next week because there is just incredible stuff. In fact, I'll just pull this up right now. Uh, now, the sunspots have temporarily, they've actually gone past us. The, the ones that sent us eight flares uh, our direction, those have passed. There are more that are on the back that are coming back around. Uh, and then, of course, this just happened. 12,000 mile deep canyon of fire has opened up on the sun, splitting, uh, spitting intense solar wind towards Earth. This is just one of many. We are in solar cycle 25, which even the most, uh, the most respected uh, people in that field are saying that this is going to be a wild one. So as far as the EMP shield, I highly recommend it. The thing is, is not only are you getting an amazing product that can actually protect you against all three phases of an EMP, you're protecting your motors, your uh, cars, your RVs, your boats, whatever you want to put this on your house, uh, all from an EMP or a CME. And I think that the CME has now uh, kind of in a race taken front right now. Uh, CME, I feel like is is most guaranteed going to happen. Uh, but I feel like in the next five years, this is probably one of the bigger risks that we are looking at. Uh, this is 100% American made. Every single part from every wire to every uh, transistor in this thing, it is 100% uh, American made. So you know that you're getting something that supports a local company, uh, a veteran owned company and uh, local families that hand build these. So th there's not many reasons why not to get one at this point. But if you do get it, it, you end up getting $50 off that's grandfathered in. Uh, that's per device. So if you end up needing to do three cars, you can save a lot of money if you end up using our link, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Uh, I believe that people really do need this, and I, I the, these very well could save lives. All right, that is EMP at uh, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. All right, and then, by the way, my internet is fine now. Dex, are you? Can you talk? That's, that's weird. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? My internet's fine too. I was checking it. No, obviously mine... I didn't like that. So, so when and I... and I didn't even get a chance to say that they responded saying there's nothing happening. But whatever. Go to the well, website and read it. Well, just so Sorry, you know, I like that. when I open up websites that have a bunch of junk on it, it says uh, that it says that uh, you know your resources are low. That one actually came up with a a bar that said your internet is unstable. I've never seen that. I'm wired in to gigabit speeds. I'm not Wi-Fi or anything. So yeah, that, we both have gigabit. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, that that um, was weird. Yeah. There's nothing else running on it right now except for, you know, a TV. And then Hey, um I want to I want to say a quick thing about EMP Shield Adam. You know how we talk we mentioned DHS, DoD and all those other things. They actually have product lines for critical infrastructure and they call it that, critical infrastructure products. So um, we won't sell them that we'll never see them because it's like top secret government stuff that they sell, but that's what they call it. That's their critical infrastructure product line. So keep that in mind, folks. 
basically the the government and the military are doing this and they're not they're not saying hey you guys should do do this too uh they're protecting themselves and they're not protecting us this is the thing we all I, I don't know how many videos have to be out there on this subject but i think there should probably be more no one's going to come save you no one's going to uh help you out there isn't going to be a, a block cap, uh, you know, a block watch uh, captain that's going to go, hey, we're going to get everything back going. When the real SHTF happens or if our grid goes down, it is pretty much everyone for themselves. So if you have a, a running car or if you have a running generator, these things will be extremely, extremely helpful. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, then we have Vlad bans in UKR from social media over uncomfortable truths. Okay, did he say that? No. It says that the Ruski soldiers have been banned from using social media on the front line because of uncomfortable truths about their actions in UKR. UKR intelligence has claimed the deputy commander of Western Military District ordered officers to restrict troops use of social media, the Telegraph reported. It says this is because field commanders complained about the impact of false info, said the GUR, uh, UKR's main military intelligence agency. It says commanders of all ranks in a number of units have faced opposition from personnel expressing dissatisfaction, uh, dissatisfaction with the conduct of special military operation in UKR. Now, this actually comes off the back end of just last week. I believe it was uh, the Times actually verified uh, on their side, on the UKR side, of them committing something that was borderline atrocity, right? So I'm I'm surprised that uh, that that they are possibly saying that the other side is now uh, not supposed to have any kind of social media out there. Uh, it says the document blames an increase in activity by UKR military Ganda units in response to the quote success of the Russian armed forces, stopping short of pointing the finger at troops, realizing the truth of Vlad's bloody invasion. The UKR said it's uh, are trying to influence on historical memory, distortion of historical facts of Russian history. Dex, this is exactly what I said. Like, what is going to be wrote in the history books? To a T. And, and, and keep in mind, let's be real clear. This is the UKR saying it. This is the UKR sourcing it. And they're claiming they sourced it from the Internet and from special documents that they attained. And that's it. That's all we have. To manipulate opinions and distribute false information about events about the situation in the war zone. This is what's going to be wrote down in history books. And remember that the folks that are writing this, these history books, they're, they're tied in with all of these big corporations. They're tied in with all of this. They are going to write this down. That's why I said it doesn't really matter what we believe. And it does matter like for us, for our own knowledge. But as far as like what's what if you have a kid right now and they're 20 years old and they're looking back at at 2022 that's what fact is that's what the truth is that's their history they're studying history and they're studying all the stuff that we're watching right now and we're going wait that's not how it went down so just that's why it, it, it kind of opened up my brain to like what happened 50 years ago um uh, before I was born. What happened 80 years ago before I was born? What happened 120 years ago before you were born? Was the Wild West like they said it was? You know, it was all the were all these things if humans are writing down the history of things, are they lying? Are they fibbing on some of this stuff? It's a question to ask yourself. And then chilling moment that Vlad is pictured with secret nuclear briefcase at a funeral amid fears of a WW3. So, I, you know what? I, a lot of people sent this to us and this is freaky, but understand that we have this as well. Uh, the U.S. president, that should always be close to the U.S. president at all times. 
Uh, it's usually kind of hidden away. <clears throat> Wherever he goes, that follows. Uh, so you'll see the football is what we call it, right? But this is Vlad's football. That apparently is their nuke access. And it's always guarded and escorted. It says paranoid. And you guys know, and anybody that watches my show, you know like how I, I say to look at these articles. And I've read enough of them. I see this in every article. And I try to point it out as much as possible. Just so you guys know, when you're looking at something, you may be... Uh, you may be manipulated without even knowing it before the article even starts it says and these are descriptors right paranoid vlad was seen attending a moscow funeral today surrounded by military guards carrying nuclear briefcase now i honestly i think he's getting kicked out of the young leaders club i think he is uh possibly getting kicked out of this group that he was actually in this entire time that is my new theory. Again, that's just my opinion. Uh, so I guess he would be paranoid, right? But it says that the Prez arrived at Christ the Savior Cathedral in Moscow to pay his respects uh, to firebrand alternate Vladimir Zarvnovsky. Dex? You know, I'm looking at this picture, and if you sort of zoom in on his face, do you see less of that? Because this is one of the most recent, obviously the most recent photos we're going to see of him, right? Because he's sort of been in hiding or allegedly been in hiding. Does he seem less puffy or, or just as puffy as they were describing? No, he looks skinny, actually. Yeah, that, so I'm wondering, like, you know, all that, is that Vlad? rhetoric about about him being being puffy because of, you know, cancer and treatments and all this other stuff, or or is that really him or it was all that nonsense? Or uh, is the the cancer actually getting to him though? Um, I I've known now many people that have had cancer and they lose a lot of weight uh, during treatments. And then on the other picture, do you think that's really what the briefcase looks like? I mean, that looks like it's straight out of like the '60s. You think they've modernized that thing by now, right? This is purposeful. This is super purposeful. It, it 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 goes into the whole thing that people think that you know uh, that they're so backwards and that they're dealing with 1980s stuff, style and everything, and it's the motherland and Mother Russia. No, I don't think that that's it. Um, <clears throat> the thing looks like it has an eight track ready to pop out of it, right? It looks like it, it's it's. It looks like it's asking Laserdisc if it could come over, and, and Laserdisc is like, no, uh, no, I we we have a reputation to withhold. I'm I don't guessing know. that's a photo from a museum. It's sitting on a pedestal. The guy behind it has a cell phone in his hand, so, and it's not like they're gonna let some rando that close to a real, a real, no. a real briefcase, right? Yeah, I bet this is this is a, at a museum of a 1960s or 1950s version of it. That's that's my thought on it. <clears throat> and then uh, Vlad, dressed in black, made the sign of the cross in front of Zaramnovsky, open casket as the political leader and his close ally were laid to rest. Oh, and then it, he is believed to have fallen ill with CV before being hospitalized, despite boasting eight CV. J-A-B's are they talking about Vlad they're not talking about Vlad are they oh no, oh, they're, they're talking about, about the person, person who passed okay alright boasting eight uh, okay well figured that one out two plus two folks uh, and then a missile takes the lives of at least 52 at crowded UKR train station uh, by the way, we have uh, more, even more updates on the CV situation with Nancy, and it's as predicted. Absolutely, I mean, you guys that watch this show, it's like, man, could it get any more predictable than this? Uh, Jessica Smith, did you see uh, BP? Yes, I did. Thank you so much. And then, uh, just to make sure I don't miss anybody, I want to thank uh, Stephen B. Thank you so much. And hold on. I know I missed people here. Sorry. Uh, Irish Rebel says, even when you present truth and facts, what's going on, they still will not believe you. They do not want uh, their normality shattered. 
Irish, I think you're a lot like me as far as like you, you have said some comments in the last week that I totally agree with as far as people don't want to hear about this. It's taboo. And most people just like anything they don't want to address. Like if there's something that is bothering them, they're like, just don't talk about it. I don't want to think about it right now. That's this because this is the ultimate, like, I don't want to think about that right now. And it even turns just like anger turns into depression or depression turns into anger uh, or sadness turns into anger towards others. I think that people are, that's why people attack people that kind of screw up their idea of normality. They don't want that to be true. And I think some part of them actually does kind of see the pattern and they almost think like, oh, well, he's taking this, this, this thing and making it look like this. No, that's what's, this is looking, looking like what's happening. By the way, Witches Brew, have you seen the cover of The Economist? Uh, I missed that yesterday. Uh, yes, I have. And we covered it and we've covered it. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe I, if I haven't seen the, the very, very latest one, I covered last year's and the last, uh, the year before that. So I may want to update myself on that. Uh, every year, The Economist has done a really creepy symbolic uh, cover that has just weird predictive things in it. And then Stephen McMahon says, can anybody old enough uh, to remember them? Can you believe we would call uh, the late 60s the good old days? Well, actually, I, I feel like that would be uh, the good old days. Listening to the radio and watching the few channels you had without cell phones. I, I just kind of wish I want to go back before cell phones. I, I really do kind of miss not having cell phones around. Uh, I am me, not Pony Simply, who I am, Tony Simply. Adam, you rock. Tony, I'm sorry I missed that. Did you see the uh, uh, the article that got put out on uh, President B? Yes, I did, and I will actually get to that. Please do what you can to support the channel, Justin True. Uh, you guys, I, I do... Uh, if anybody's struggling in the Fugle fam, as far as their channel go, we try to help them. Justin True has a really good head on his shoulder. Make sure to go check him out. He has been here for four years. He's solid Fugle fam. And then a missile hit a train station in eastern UKR where thousands had gathered Friday, uh, taking the lives of at least 52 and wounding dozens more in an attack on a crowd of mostly women and children trying to flee a new looming offensive from the bear. So, Dex, uh, one thing about this is, do the, do we have verification of this? Is there any uh, video or photo evidence? Or is this further uh, war crimes, right? <clears throat> well, I think the real question is where did the, where was the, you know, the missile from and where did, you know, who, who did it? But there are certainly pictures at least being produced now uh, about, you know, the scene after the, damage. the fact. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the ultimate question. The thing about a, a uh, missile is, uh, there's a lot of countries that could fire it and there's motivations. It's kind of like a murder mystery, right? There's a lot of different countries that could, uh, benefit from say WW3 or, you know, some, some don't believe that. There's a lot of military industrial complexes and there's multiple countries that are supplying the rest of the world with their military gear. So if they have something go down, they go, oh, well, we need to come to you for these things or we need to uh, uh, import stuff from your country that specifically has stuff to do with the conflict. And a country that isn't involved, they just uh, reap the benefits from somebody else's conflict. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. And then UKR situation report, Slovakia's donated S-300 surface-to-air missile system is on its way. So uh, we talked about the S-300 last time. I believe we mentioned it. It was because they were loading S-300 uh, uh, surface-to-air missiles in and around Moscow. In fact, they placed at least four uh, surrounding Moscow, and I believe it's like 11 now. Uh, that are inside of Russia protecting them. Now, UKR's uh, donated S-300 from Slovakia is actually on its way. It says that the U.S. military is sending Patriot surface-to-air missile systems to Slovakia 
to help defend the country's airspace in light of the S-300 transfer. It just, it really seems like this is a freaking uh, proxy conflict with how much the U.S. is sending gear to this place so then they can send it to this place. And then, of course, you have Vlad sending in all of his crappy stuff. Dex? Yeah, exactly. Every one of these countries is just unloading. Like, oh, I'll give up all of our fighter jets because we want the new ones, right? We'll give up all of our S-300s. By the way, the, the, the current ones that are in Moscow are S-500s. So it's not like <laughs> these are old. These are like really old. So it's like, yeah, oh, we'll, we'll right. throw those things over there. You know, let's get the new ones. The, the you know, as long if we donate, we get new. That's basically what it what it sounds like with all these countries, oh and they're all just gosh. cashing in on it. And and then they say to their people, like, "Well, we need this for the budget because, well, we donated it to UKR. I mean, you you don't you're not uh saying that you don't support UKR and them defending for their freedom in their lives, right? And the people are like, "Yeah, I'll pay extra taxes." The Prime Minister of Slovakia, Edward Hager, has confirmed that his country has transferred its only Soviet-era S-300 PMU long-range surface-to-air missile system to the UKR military. It's only. So they, they say, well, yeah, we have one. <laughs> we'll send it to you. I would. I wonder. I think somebody should put together all of the support that that they have publicly, you know, received, and kind of put that together in a timeline. All the stuff that uh, all of these countries have sent, including money. Uh, there's billions and billions of dollars. It's like this country, this country, this country. Everyone is sending financial aid. What good is financial aid? I, I guess. What? Where does the financial aid go if it's not going to military stuff? Is it going to buy food? not in that kind of amounts of money and then is it there to support the people living there because a lot of them have left simply pony says heard someone say my name love mob jstone 78 hey that's a great idea simply jstone is one of our mods and absolutely amazing by the way i i tweeted that uh that piece of art she did for you uh dex that was really cool oh isn't that that's pretty awesome i need to get the full picture and put it up yeah, if you want, you could uh, link it and I'll show it. I think it's cool. Uh, before we talk about Millie and Austin, we've talked about Millie quite a bunch recently, and and people are questioning if he is a good guy or bad guy. I don't. Not many people I know are questioning. They're just kind of saying one or the other. Uh, but reach out to the counterparts and get no reply. Hmm. Before we talk about that, um, I do want to remind you right now if you are looking to actually prep up. I'd highly recommend going over to uh, My Patriot Supply at marfuglenews.com slash prep. Uh, and then one of the reasons why is right now uh, the prices are staying the same. We are headed into an area where it very well may end up into hyperinflation. Even if it doesn't, uh, the food prices, the wheat prices, the transportation prices, the delivery fees, everything else uh, that could put, put, uh, potentially go into actually getting this kind of uh, supply is going up and they have not raised their prices to this day but it has been a long time in fact when all of the other co companies uh, ended up raising their prices they kept it the same uh, the one thing they did do is they did take away some of their smaller discounts uh, but they still have a hundred and fifty dollars off on their three month supply these are bucketed sealed MREs uh, that are basically everything you need to survive on the food side uh, and then it, for you to store for years Again, this is long-term survival food. Other other things that you might want to think about is iodine tablets. They actually have them there. They're very hard to get a hold of. You would need those. You would need to take them uh, in the event of a nuclear event so the radiation would not absorb into your thyroids. Uh, so make sure to go check that out. Again, there's lots of stuff over there. And water filtration. Even if you have a local grid down scenario where a storm ha happens, uh, if you have a water filtration system, uh, because all of the ta the taps won't run anymore, that's for sure, uh, you would need to be able to filter whatever water you can get your hands on. Uh, so that is all over there. And uh, again, I would get it well. There's regular people delivering it. If SHTF happens, you're not going to be able to order things from Amazon. You're not going to be able to get long-term survival food. In fact, uh, some people are getting this as a potential investment for currency. 
for trade, for barter. Uh, the, there's uh, many things that were on the list of, of things that people used in Venezuela after they hit hyperinflation, which we're already, we already have elites like Jack Dorsey saying uh, hyperinflation is coming soon. Uh, but there was things that, that they traded in, in uh, Venezuela and probably still trading uh, that those are a lot of the things that, that ended up being worth more than gold is food. So again, make sure to go check that out. Uh, one thing about a, a sealed MRE is that you can hand it off, you can store them in different places, you can take it out of the bucket and put it somewhere else and you know, they are still good for years. All right, and then uh, Dex. Hey, I put that link up for that art piece. It's in uh, Screener. Okay, let's load it up. This is Jaystone, uh, a, a piece of art she did uh, for fun for Dex. She uh, did this as a tribute. Yeah, so it, yeah, she surprised me with this. It's totally awesome. She's she's fantastic. She does. She likes to to do art. She does a lot of art. Okay, a lot of me, paintings. Let me uh, load this here. Okay, so can everybody see that? Okay, yeah. This and by the way, if you ever saw the the times that Dex filled in, <coughs> this was his stage. She even got the Route sixty six, his mic, and then his uh, sign that said Dex. Well, actually, did you have a sign that said Dex? You did. No, you? I, well, I had had word, I had letters on the wall. That was my old studio. Yeah, I had it set up like that uh, with the flag in the background and the, um, the microphone, the, the antique microphone on the desk. Yeah, she captured a lot, a lot of it. She did a really good job. I was so impressed. Yeah, I am too. That if uh, you should, anybody should go back there. And then look, there's even the Wi-Fi symbol in the corner. That's funny. Um, anyways, that is Jason and Armad. Uh, she has sent me a piece as, as well. She sent she sent all sorts of cool stuff to everybody. So, um, uh, yeah, I was and trying I, to see if I, I had put one that on my reach. My Twitter. I'll find the one. I got a, the one of of yours too, Adam. I'll throw it on there too. People can see it. Is it the uh, the flag and then the Lego? Yeah, the the Lego. Hang on a second. I'll grab it. Okay. Cool. All right, and then uh, Millie and Austin. I actually, I think I have it. All right. Yeah, I thought that this is this is my f uh, favorite here. I keep all of the art that you guys send, but this one is from Jay, so it's very special. It's got um, this is a real Lego figure that somebody sent me, and it it even had the mustache. And she did an MFN logo in the bat, uh, the bat wing. She knows I have all the Batman stuff, and so, anyways, she that that's the kind of people that we have in the Fugal fam. So that's why I totally agree with Love Mob J Stone seventy eight. Uh, Millie and Austin frequently reach out to Rune counterparts and get no reply. It sounds like Ganda to me because uh, maybe they just they're like, oh well, uh, what's his face didn't answer his call. He's probably paying, playing handball without me again. Um, and then probably calls G's side and says, hey, can you tell uh, Vladstaff to call me back? That's probably what happens. It says, neither Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin nor General Mark Milley, uh, the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, have spoken to their counterparts in Vlad country since the invasion of UKR. I think that's BS. Personally, I don't know. But if that is true, that's not a good sign. Uh, but that me that just means... I, I See, I don't even get that because even after they went in, they said that they were talking. So I, I wonder if this can be fact-checked and if this is actually true. Uh, maybe they can technically say it's true because others talked or the embassies talked or somebody else did. Austin affirmed that the two Pentagon leaders have frequently reached out to the Russian Defense Ministry, Minister Sergei Shogu and General Valery uh, Gerasimov, uh, but have been unsuccessful. But Dex, also, uh, Sergei Shogu, is there any news that he has surfaced whatsoever? Because wasn't he missing? He was like full-on missing. 
Yeah, he was. Let me see if there's anything new on him. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look and see. I, I have not anything. heard of uh, General Valery Gor- Gorismov either. So in in case you didn't see the previous shows, we covered this. Uh, <clears throat> Sergoy Shogu, uh, Mark Milley's counterpart, has been missing, has been out of the public eye. And that's another sign that something weird may be going on. Like, are they in a bunker right now? Or what's going on? Is he the successor? Like, if, if something happens to Vlad, is he going to be in a secret bunker? And is he going to take the presidency? I know that sounds weird, but I, I, I've heard many places that Sergei is like his, his right-hand man, right? Isn't Sergei Shogu? I don't know how their structure works. Like, who... Didn't didn't we cover something that said who would take over as the president if he if anything happened to him? Well, we had somebody that the oligarchs uh, said that they wanted if something happened to him, and he was another former uh, KGB. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, uh, Sergey has was gone for a while. He's gone for over twelve days, uh, and everybody was asking. They said he resurfaced, but I don't know. I haven't found all the details on it yet. But yeah, he has been seen since then. But he's not in the limelight at the moment. But they said since mid-February, now it's April, they have not talked to him. So in six weeks, they have not talked to Sergoy uh, Shogu. That's publicly. I don't know if that is uh, that is absolutely true, but w- we will see. I don't know. Some something. Fish- well, he did have a falling out with him. The you know Vlad did right. That's what they. That's one of the other things they said that they had a falling out. So that could be that he's not in power, so to speak, or maybe told to go sit in the office and be quiet. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. That's uh, on the creepier side. And uh, like I said, prediction like no other. Brought more PS from y'all. God bless Fugle fam. Says Bible Talk Triple Seven. Hey, thank you for continued support. Thank you for the few that go above and beyond. Really do appreciate you. I think what people see is is um, you know the donations and things like that. Um, it is just a select few that actually you know actually uh, make up the majority of it, and then what people don't realize is that YouTube takes 30% of that and then taxes takes another 20, 25% of that. And then me and Dex split those. So I don't think people realize like even on like when people see us get a $200 night or something that turns into a hundred and then that turns into 50 each. So $50 for a whole day's work, it's uh gets pretty rough. Remember we're controversial and not suitable. So Thank you, everybody that supports. We don't talk about that much because we don't. It, it, we're not asking. We've never asked for donations, uh, but we do thank people that do. So just so you guys know, thank you. It is much appreciated. I think people in their heads think that there's a lot more than there is, and that everybody is going and running out and uh, getting a, a four hundred dollar EMP shield. It's not happening. Uh, thank you for the people that do. And thank you for those of you that uh, that do support. We appreciate you. And then General Kinetic says, if end is nigh, I'm cool. Lukewarm equals balanced. That's right. And then Melissa Dawn, thank you so much. Thank you for stopping in. I appreciate you. And then Irish Rebel, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then more politicians test positive for CV as the virus spreads among DC power players. Did we not, like, call this to the T? And not even, like, to the T. They're they're even... uh, We've got another piece here. So, by the way, as as we said before, Nancy came down with it, and this was two days after she publicly uh, hugged on everybody, including Barack, uh, including uh, President B. The the videos that showed President B wandering around the room, uh, those were all from that meeting. Well, now they're saying that more people are testing positive. Uh, In fact, Senator Susan Collins and Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock both tested positive for CV. So wait a second. Now we're getting into senators. So Dex, do you realize like a big group of senators and presidents and house speaker, they all have this thing that technically they can say, oh, well, they're they need to separate and and hide away from the public because they don't want to, you know, 
they need to separate themselves from everybody but really they could be on a train to to uh you know greenbrier or something right there you know we're if as this number and list gets bigger and bigger uh, it's gonna it's gonna set off some you know alarms in my mind like how many of them are going home so to speak or going home to uh you know hide out and and why is it all happening at once now of course we've got a, a great you know excuse and and the fact that we've got they've labeled nancy the the super spreader so to speak so you know that that helps them with the messaging but when everybody starts bailing out of uh you know the capital there um makes you a little nervous it even says, but their presence on the floor of the Senate for the historic vote raises concerns that other lawmakers and perhaps even Vice President Kamala could have been exposed and may test positive in the coming days. They're already predicting that the VP, the president, everyone is about to test positive for this, including the previous president. All of these people would not be in public appearances. And then... The White House acknowledges President B could get the CV, stresses that he is protected. It says that the White House on Friday acknowledged that President B could get CV amid an uptick in positive cases surrounding the president, but stressed he has taken steps to protect himself. We take every precaution to ensure that we keep him safe. We keep the vice president safe, the first lady, the second gentleman, uh, our staff here. But it is certainly possible that he will test positive for CV. And he is V. Uh, he is boosted, protected, and the most uh, from the most severe strains of it. I'm going to go over to the chat because I really do want to feel feel everybody out here. Because do you do you remember uh, China just closed down 25 million people city uh, completely? No one's leaving. Restaurants are not serving. Uh, they're not having people in. Everything just shut down because of this. And now, our White House just had essentially everybody that is important, the, the top like six, seven people, including, and then now senators, are all testing positive. And then, is this continuity of government people? Like, they, they uh, if they don't show up to public meetings, like uh, historic votes or something like that, you would need a reason for that, right? Do you believe the other reason? Because most of us going and sitting in packed uh, malls with thousands of people and now there's no more rules kind of go, well, okay. Adam, did you know that two days ago NPR put out a headline that says what happens if half of Congress perishes? Can we pull that up? That is, uh, that's, I did not know. Jerry Shirts, J-R-I Shirts, 99. Hi, Marf and Dex. I wish I could get more, but I appreciate what you guys do. By the way, I guess I didn't get the memo uh, that CV is over. <laughs> uh, yes, it, it no, it, it, uh, didn't get the memo well here basically uh everybody is it it acts like it didn't exist right it's pretty crazy considering NPR articles in screener where i'm at uh nexit says crazy lucid dreams lately so get ready i hear that i do hear that i've been just having crazy uh, ones that i remember ones that i it just wake up sweating from it's just insane uh frustrated squatch thank you over on d live vicky k chewy weather serenity pa sky house annette lapau uh carol ann over on d live thank you brian kc14 thank you for following and then everybody that supports over there thank you guys um okay let's let's pull this up so npr apparently just did this did a fugal family member uh bring this up in chat uh, no, I found it. Um, and I actually, I had read it uh, earlier and I totally forgot about it. And then when you said what you said, I'm like, ah, somebody covered that. So. Wow. Okay. So what happens if half of Congress perishes? Even Congress isn't sure. Wow. 
What would happen if a major disaster hit America? Millions perished. Air traffic ground uh, to a halt. Electricity was down and Congress needed to act. And what if half of the members of Congress were among the perished or missing? These aren't pitches for a disaster movie set in Washington. These are all serious scenarios floated by members of Congress tasked with coming up with ways to bring Congress into the modern world, a world where cyber threats, pan mm, nuclear conflict, and political violence are all well within the scope of possibility. It says, this isn't just hypothetical anymore, said Representative Ed Perlmutter, uh, uh, out of Colorado, at a hearing this week at the Select Committee of the Modernization of Congress. It says Perlmutter uh, called, recalled recent political violence, including the 6th on the cap and where armed mm, were yards away from where lawmakers hid and when a bang bang shot at Republican members practicing for a charity baseball game in 2017. It says former Representative Brian Baird, a Demp, mm, uh, told the committee that with razor thin majorities in Congress, any one of those events, including the baseball bang bang, could have left the country in a crisis. The reality is, had 20 members of the R conference been perished that day, the balance of power in the House of Representatives would have been changed. This, I mean, this looks like, this feels like something out of a Black Mirror episode. Like, what if this happened and they're really not set up for it? They don't have, uh, they don't exactly know what would happen. I'm assuming they have some sort of plan, but this doesn't happen unless something like out of designated survivor happens. They have, they have a plan for continuity of government. And I just want to remind you over the last year, they have done more continuity of government drills than they have in the last 10 years. Think about that. So yeah. What do you think about this? Does that, uh, does that, Make you a little just kind of curious there. And then back to this. Axiom private astronauts headed to International Space Station. So the ISS, I thought was like, I, I almost thought like, isn't it empty or something? But apparently private astronauts are headed to the International Space Station. What I wonder is what is actually uh, going on here with the whole Alaska thing coming down? Is there more of these going on? Remember just last week we covered <clears throat> that three of the uh, ghost town launch centers at De Dex. Can you remind me of the name? Sorry about that, guys. Can you remind me of the uh, it's name? It's Cape Canaveral and it's Missile Row, I believe. Yes, Missile Row at Cape Canaveral opened up three more uh, pods, basically this huge line of where they used to do launches. And back when Barack was prez, it all just went ghost town, like rust and everything. And, and apparently, uh, private companies kept it up, kept, but it was like, it was a ghost town. Now, apparently those just last week, they're opening them up for private companies. All these private companies are shipping people out, uh, out into space. And Axiom isn't even one people talk about. I mean, not very often. It says four private astronauts are in orbit following the successful launch of an Axiom miss mission. Uh, the first all private astronaut mission to the ISS. Axiom space astronauts lifted off at 1 uh, or 11.17 a.m. Eastern on Friday, April 8th uh, from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It says the SpaceX Falcon 9 uh, rocket propelled the Dragon Endeavor spacecraft carrying Axiom 1 crew members Michael Lopez Algeria, or Algria, Larry Connor, Mark Pathy, and Ethan Stibb. All these names. Look at that. Ethan Stibb. I want... Or Iten? Iten? I'm not kidding. Iten? The crew will spend more than a week conducting scientific research, outreach, and commercial activities. What a historic launch. This is an all-private launch. This is just rich people going, hey, let's go to space. Okay? What is going on here? Nobody's asking questions. Something does not sit with me. And then Elon, the guy who, the rocket that they're renting, that they're using his engines, right? He's saying everybody should have six, seven, eight kids because uh, he's worried about humanity. 
He's literally worried that uh, that we don't have enough people on Earth. Meanwhile, everybody else is saying that we're overpopulated and to stop populating. Meanwhile, all of our birth rates have just just crashed. And they're telling us we have like 10 years left before all of these animals perish and everything else. Sorry, I, it's like the, the crazy man on the corner with the cardboard sign saying the end is nigh is now the new Bill Nye. End is nigh, Bill Nye. He's the smart, smart one. All right, and then uh, before we move on to how the fake Homeland agents actually got into President B's new, his uh, s- secret service, I do want to remind you about Off-Grid. We don't, uh, we haven't uh, actually touched on this for a couple weeks. Off-Grid is how you can hide yourself. And it is also how you can shield yourself. Off-Grid makes a plethora of bags. Their new backpack and duffel bag. Uh, the duffel bag being basically a giant Faraday bag can protect your things from any kind of signals, not only going in, but also going out. But the backpack actually has built-in smaller bags uh, that have slots for all of your electronics, from your key fob to your cell phone to your tablet to your laptop. That way no one can hack it, but also... They can't track it. If you are starting to wake up to the fact that even if you're not doing anything wrong and they are actually listening to your phone, watching your camera, doing all this, if you really are starting to look over your shoulder, then I highly recommend going over and checking these out. Marfuglenews.com slash off grid. But what these also double as is essentially Faraday. Uh, little bags for items that you do not want anything going in and anything going out. So uh, you put your cell phone in this. It's not trackable. It doesn't matter what E911 chip they have in it. It's not turning on. They can't access it. They don't know where you're going. I know a lot of people that have been uh, asking me in my my circle of friends. My friend Dave, uh, I a- ended up giving him one of mine because it's it's really actually something that's uh, it's something that people need to start looking at. Dex? You know what I recently did? I got one of the uh, the duffels, right? Because it's a real big bag. You can put a lot of stuff in. So I decided I would take all of my comms, all, all of my communication, my radios, my ham radio, everything. I've got it all charged. I keep it all charged and I keep it in that bag. And when I need it, I'll pull it out and use it. But then when I put it back in, I store it in that bag because it's like having a Faraday bag, right? It's the same thing. It's a great way to store a bunch of electronics. That, that particular bag. And of course, the other bags, you know, phone stuff, or you've already described, but that's my use. I think it's fantastic. No, and if, like I said, if nothing in and nothing out. We wanted to update on these Homeland agents and just kind of open up your mind to the fact that these two guys pretended they were this, had some sort of crazy budget. Uh, Dex, do you want to talk about the updates that we actually have with this? Basically, they they had some uh, Pakistani um, passports, which um, also could be something that's related to the whole, you know, the this whole threat that was against us during T Man's era, right? Yeah. So they were they were in a they were in a luxury apartment. Um, they weren't paying rent. Uh, so they didn't have to pay for it. What they did was they used uh, their their you know fake government status uh, to convince the the landlords that they should be rent free. They also got the video surveillance system access to the surveillance system of the building. The building actually housed lots of other people that worked in the government, including other agents. So that was part of what they were doing. They were obviously surveilling um, and and getting to know these people. And yeah, they did have uh, international passports um, or visas. Uh, they Their passports were stamped with visas from both PAC and um, the Iran to the store uh, country. Um, and obviously they had a lot of, you know, uh, weapons and things in their apartment. Uh, part of it was to go along with their, you know, appearance, right? They had the, the proper type of, you know, hand boom boom that looked the part, right? And even they had the older model and the newer model when the models changed uh, and they, they upgraded to a certain type of, uh, of of weapon for all of the secret service. So yeah, lots of lots of updates in this article is we were asking all these questions because we, we broke, when we talked about this, it had just broke, right? It really wasn't a lot of details. And I imagine we'll get some more details as the investigation, um, expands as they you know release if they release more of it or not 
Uh, but it definitely doesn't just look like a couple guys, like let's have fun and get a free ride and see what happens. It looks like it was pretty much an orchestrated, uh, you know, a event that we don't know exactly what the outcome was supposed to be, but obviously it was stopped at this point. It's, it looks like they were trying to, it, they could have been trying to take out our president. They were getting, they were getting cozy with the secret service or they were trying to <clears throat> kidnap the first lady or something. I don't know. Look at these two guys. They look like, they look like agents. This guy, especially he looks like some sort of like, you know, I, I he could play the part. And then look at this. Look at this ring. I, that just makes me question. If I saw, I, when I see dudes with like a big black opal ring like that, it's like, is that your wedding ring? What is that? But these guys were pretending to be secret service or basically they were pretending to be part of this new thing and they convinced secret service agents that they were legit. They drove around in big black SUVs, brand new. They were getting rent free in a, in a $40,000 a month uh, luxury condo. Uh, look at that. Look at that. It's just incredible. And then they also had all, they, this has a tons of updates in here too, by the way. This scares the crap out of me because what were they trying to do? That's why I say people get prepped up because something is coming. There's more than more than uh, enough out there to prove that they are trying to do something massive right now. What were they trying to get their hands on? Uh, remember that the, in the I ran to the store, uh, they uh, Soleimani had a plan that T-Man said that they took him out by drone strike because him and his second-hand man, whose second-hand man is still alive, uh, they took him out by strike because they said that they were planning a 2001 September event that made 2000 in September make it made it look like it was chicken feed. So they had a massive event planned for the United States. Do you think that those plans are now over? These things are coming in the future. Whether they're successful or not, that's a big question. But they're coming. They're, they still have those. A lot of people hate us. Uh, Cordoon Franklin, wife Jamie Martini Franklin says, Hello, family. Stage four melanoma, but she's watching. Trust God, fear not. Uh, Cordoon Franklin, and uh, I know I know Jamie Martini Franklin, and she's been in the chat for a long time. I am praying for you, Jamie. I am so sorry to hear that. All of my mods, I know that they will be praying right now. Uh, Jamie, I'm so sorry to hear that. I uh, just cannot, uh, I, but I'm, I have all the faith that, that, uh, everything is going to work out just fine. Uh, regardless of what happens with that, um, stage four is no fun. Uh, but there, there are really, really great hope stories out there. So please keep your head up, Jamie. I'm praying for you. Okay. All right. Much love. Uh, again, I, I know exactly what you're going through or well, I, I'm, I don't know exactly what you're going through. I know what uh, Cordoon, I know what you're going through and I know what others are uh, going through around you and I know that you have to be strong too. So, all right, much love and I'm, I'm praying for you, okay? Oh man, I, I hate hearing that. And I think all of us, you know, all of us worry about that kind of stuff. And it's just, it, there's nothing you can really say to to fix it except for pray and just make sure that you are caring for them as much as you can all right and then uh dex uh you want to go over the web only i just uh just to remind you go over marfuglenews.com slash energy if if you want to get on the list to get yourself a solar generator they're silent no one can hear them and again uh you can use these in your home all right dex tons wow. of stuff oh there's a ton uh, there, there's always a ton this is where the rest of it falls off we cover so much and there's some stuff we can't cover there's things that are too hot for tv too far to one side or the other that's where it goes into web only content head to marfuglenews.com click on the thumbnail for the show scroll down to web only content open that description on youtube click the first link that says show notes It'll take you right here uh lots of updates uh, especially in the uh corruption stuff going on on all ends of of the uh the spectrum here from uh the laptop to um the past uh, event that uh 
two uh, events ago of November. Um, plenty of things happening, even in uh, criminal cases that they we thought were gone, gone away that are now coming back or potentially coming back. You can find out what's happening there. Um, you can find out why the fir- what the what would keep the former administration from running again. He's got an excuse. You can find out about that. Uh, plenty of other things going on. Uh, wow. Peter Thiel calls out uh, Buffett and a whole lot of other people. You want to know why? Head over to marfuglenews.com. You can find out the rest of the story there. Uh, find out about the rest of the investigations um, and even what Amazon decided to do uh, with the outcome of the uh, what happened with um, their uh, unionization that went on. So all of that and much more on marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail, scroll down to web only content or on YouTube, open that description and click show notes. Dex, is it, was that actually T-Man saying that he may not be able to, to do it because of his health? Is, did he say that? All right, I'll, I'll, we'll, spoil, we'll spill the beans on that. He said the only reason he wouldn't would be uh, health, but he also said that his health is fantastic. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, because I'm like, man, okay, but you do have other reasons to go over to the website. Uh, There's teased plenty, you on that, yes. but man, when I saw that, I'm like, oh man, that would. But of course, he's gonna. But it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I'm in the best shape of my life, and I'm New York now. I don't know why I have an accent. Thank you, everybody, for stopping in. Thank you, everybody, over on DLive. Thank you, Vicky K, Frustrated Squatch, Jack Tronics, Maui Racing Realtor. Thank you for stopping in. I uh, appreciate you, Annette's LaPau, Brian KC, and then everybody over on uh, on YouTube. Thank you, Melissa Dawn, General Kinetics, uh, Irish Rebel. Thank you, Bible Talk 777, Justin True, Jessica Smith, everyone that uh, popped in support. Make sure to thank your mods. Uh, be real beast be real beast thank you so much for the massive support tonight i work for the city of los angeles supply chain broken months behind to fix our equipment get it well you still can god bless again saying that he works for the city of los angeles uh supply chain broken uh get what you can months behind to fix our equipment and then jerry shirts says hi marvin dex oh thank you again i appreciate you jerry shirts uh, and then BNB, uh, thank you for your the super sticker there. Thank you so much, BNB. Theta Moon Me, Marf, if you can, stop being so sensitive. Uh, Theta, I know I get what you're saying. And every time I talk about the people that do say stuff, people say, oh, don't worry about them. But the, here's the thing. They're not all trolls. They actually don't know and they're misinformed. They don't realize, like, we don't get... Uh, they don't understand the structure. I do have to explain the structure because people don't actually get it. They don't know YouTube takes uh, chunks of that. They don't understand that, you know, affiliates and things are basically the only way. Somebody said like, uh, you know, go out and just do it. If, if you really believed in this, you would just say it to the world and you'd do five days a week, six days a week. And, and you would ask and you wouldn't accept anything. I have four kids. I I would be at a full-time job. Uh, I, I did it for a year. I never asked for a single donation when I was by myself. Now other people depend on me. Other families depend on me. So that's not an option. We have to actually make a living. Otherwise, we would do one. I would still be doing it, but I would be one, you know, one show a week like I was doing. When I was working full-time jobs, I was doing this as well, but I was on my break, like in the break room doing a two minute video. I, we, we didn't provide a value then. We now provide a service. People, uh, people say, well, I can just go and read all that news on the internet. I can just go and do it myself. Okay, then go do it yourself. But you're going to have to spend four or five hours looking all over the internet and remembering to check every source ever. We, we have a checklist. We check everything. From you know, from uh, all of the Chinese outlets, all of the the uh, Russian outlets, from a whole list of alternative sites, from everything, we have checked those things and we grab everything that's important. That's time consuming. So you go to one spot, you go to ours, and you could go to another service that does that. But I guarantee you, those services have things that they can do to make a living as well. That put all of the news in one, but those aren't curated by somebody you actually believe. Uh, that has a good sense of things. Those are just apps that have the news all there. Then you do all that. 
The reason why people come to our website is because they know it's put together by Dex and I. They've heard us. They know our views. And they know that they can go there and they can grab all of the news in one place. More people are going to our website than go to us. We're providing a service that actually costs us money to run. The emails cost us money to run. Every, you know, a lot of the things cost money to run from electricity to everything else. Uh, now, a, a good chunk of uh, electricity just come off because I now I get to run it by solar, at least this part of my house. But it's like people don't get it. I'm not being sensitive and like responding to every little comment there's hundreds of comments and people don't get it there's a lot of new people coming in all the time so people don't understand how the structure of this works if you're a streamer you stream and people donate if they if they find value in your stuff that's how all streaming works if you go and look at the gaming sector that's how it works i don't know where it came from that people donate because we do the work but it makes sense it's just like a busker playing guitar and somebody throws a dollar in, in the, in the case. I said to that person, I said, if, if, if that's what you think, then that's like saying a busker should play guitar on the street and somebody throws a dollar and be like, get, take that dollar and go buy yourself a musical instrument. You know, it, don't donate to me. Uh, I'm so passionate about music. I'm going to tell you, you need to go start doing music. It's a lovely idea, but it's not realistic. We have kids. We both have kids. We have families. You guys are helping support us. And then as far as affiliates go, you are physically buying something for cheaper than you would. It's something that is of use and you get to keep that item. It's a it's an exchange of goods. I, I There's a socialist kind of view that's been brewing that's like, oh, we should just work for free and we should just do it because we're saints. I'm not perfect. I'm not no saint, but I am a human being. And I, my, my time is valuable. Your time is valuable. That's why we try to provide you with the service. People get annoyed that we thank people, but again, not going to do it and not going to not thank you because you are supporting us. Those donations make a huge difference. They, uh, they, along with affiliates, which people think that we're making all this dough on affiliates. People, people aren't running and just running out to get uh, uh, solar generators that cost a thousand dollars. They're just not. Um, but when they do, we get a small percentage of that. That is, that's, that should be something great that you guys think of. You're physically getting something for cheaper, and you're helping your favorite channel. So I just want to explain that there's at least four thousand people here. Maybe you guys can share that out to chat with people that when when they do make these comments, educate them because it's a lot of people. It's not just a few. I'm, uh, and again, I don't think I'm being sensitive. I'm, I think that these people are being just ill-informed. They don't understand how streaming works and how streamers get paid. I stream two hours a night for five days a week. That's, uh, that's, uh, that doesn't include any of the stuff we do on the back end. None of it, none of the art for the stuff, none of the website stuff, none of all of the stuff that Dex does, and nothing. So I appreciate all of you that do value that, but I understand I might have to call some other people out because they don't get it. They just think that we should just do this and be so passionate about it that we should be homeless and in a ditch doing a cell phone out of a, a shopping cart and saying, the end is near. I can't be the cardboard sign uh, homeless guy. I've got kids that depend on me. So I hope you accept that as my uh, explanation. And I hope that that puts some patience in your head when we do affiliates. And I hope that makes you think of like, well, if I do need a generator, I'll go through Marf or I'll go through Dex because it helps us and it helps us survive. Literally. But it's not required. All of the service we provide, are none of them are from through a paywall. You don't have to pay a single cent to get any of the information we give out, including the information we get from you guys. If we hear something from the fam, we pass it on. If we hear something from our own personal families, we pass it on. You never have to pay a single cent to do that. And that's why I appreciate the people that do when they don't have to. Thank you, Dex. Thank you for all of your service. Thank you for your hard work. And I appreciate you. Much love. Have Ready a good night. Show, brother. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marfa. I always wonder why. Why does the news lie? I always wonder why. Why does the news lie? I always wonder why. Why does the news
survival, you get it. Again, you put a lot, you you put uh, a lot of work into. I really appreciate you and need to stop by and show my support. That's another thing. People don't see the support we show other creators and pass it forward. DLive did, though. Got the Simply Pony, Jessica Smith, Matthew Less, and a Mr. Smith. Hey, Cherie. Hey, Boomer 21. Yeah. Alabama to the white and ministry for not the boy and I live a immigrant with this intro. I swear Alabama and Attorney General Steve Marshall. It's soon it gonna be administration with the four ends and gray, gray, gray. I say. Oh, by the way, Ilea, um, my sister finally got her necklace. She's upstairs. Uh, she saw it. She saw a picture of it when I first got it, but then it ended up in a drawer. She uh, just found it. So she's going to say thank you next time she sees you. She loved it. If you haven't checked out, Ilea makes stuff on Etsy. She makes the most beautiful jewelry. I, it's just unbelievable. She makes... I can't even explain it. She does people's names and hand bends it out of metal. And it's something that only a true artist could do. I, I always wonder why, why does the news lie? My gina girl, oh, how they're out there. that Celtic warrior. I appreciate that. Someday. Most people don't know that I took a pay cut to do this. I had a really, really, really good job. Uh, one thing that affected one of my really good jobs, though, was uh, my public views on YouTube. I was told that I could work for minimum wage or resign because I was leaning towards the right direction but apparently wrong for the company's direction Ilea stopped making jewelry. Well, whatever you're... Well, now you're doing... I hope you're still doing voiceovers. I hope you uh, keep going. You, now you have all the equipment. I think you could do really well. That was a weird one. Hey, 